on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Man, man, hold up, man. What's going on with you? Nothing, you know, I'm here. Man, I cut y'all a little bit at the yes, front. Yes, you did. Say, man, I'm sorry. I want to apologize right now on air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we got this boy, man, in here. Don't need no introduction, man. This dude is a, a comedian, man, that I ain't going to lie to you. When I see his kids online and when I see how he, you know, then came across my uh, uh, Instagram on a few occasions and made me smile, I just say thank you, man. That boy, Calamar White, is in the building. Yo, 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 what's going on? What's going on, world? Man, I ain't going to lie. When I seen you the first time, I said, this is, is this Bobby Valentino, nigga. Uh, I said, this nigga Bobby Valentino. I told my boy, wife, get the picture. Put them beside each other, nigga. Boy, I, That's him right there. I either, I either get him or uh, uh, Silk the Shocker. Silk the Shocker. I put up an interview on that nigga in New Orleans a couple of weeks when Silk, I'm down now. Silk. Yeah, and then get to do it. But that's how it's coming, man. I'm family with them boys over there. Mm -hmm. So how you doing, man? Man, I'm blessed, man. We out here working. Uh, out here making work, working this Texas circuit right now. You yeah. a Dallas native, though, right? No, nah, I'm originally from Florida. I've been you from Florida? I've been living in Dallas for the past 10 years, from 2012 oh, that's why. to 22. Nigga, you were down here when we were really getting it in. I was down. When I first moved out here... Uh, Beamers was popping. I was in Beamers every yeah, Friday. Beamers Saturday. till somebody got killed over there. Then they quit. <laughs> Y'all remember that? I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it went it down was before there. they changed it to the Park Row. It yeah. was still Beamers. It was Beamers at the time. When somebody got killed. Yeah. Man. See, I was going there when that nigga uh, Pookie Leroy used to pull up in a big school bus with the painting. You oh, did? man. Yeah, Shout yeah, out yeah. to that boy Pookie Leroy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, yeah. Out, yeah. yeah, yeah. You was out here with Money Mike and Pookie yeah, was going out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, them niggas got Pookie the Leroy. Yeah, them niggas got the. <laughs> them niggas got the Aston Martin. Then they got the. Yeah, yeah you know. Pookie Leroy had made it at uh, 106 and Park. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I that, that shit, yeah. I, I, hey, that boy went down through that. Yeah. Shout out. That's a. I mean, like I said, that's a, that, that nigga close I to me. Pukalee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He one of them guys that from uh, East Texas to Dallas. Mm -hmm. You know, he 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 really he definitely got a, a you know family and stuff. Yeah, and it pretty much links us together mm -hmm. because of that. He real dope, man. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what's going on? No, you know, we like to take it back okay. to your childhood. He said in Florida. Uh -huh. What part of Florida are you from? Uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, the fourth largest city in Florida. Because every time I tell people I'm from Florida, they automatically like think about Miami and shit. Fort like Lauderdale, that. I think about yeah, Fort yeah, Lauderdale. Yeah, yeah, But I'm from St. Pete. We're the fourth largest city in Florida. I'll be having to put that out. Never there, heard we, of them. You know Rahway? Right yeah. He from St. Pete. We from the same city. Oh, Winky okay. Wright, the boxer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. St. Pete, nigga. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, nigga, you left. <laughs> nigga, you here in Dallas. You got, me. Euro. you got me. So which city you were at? You were at Florida or Dallas? you were at Dallas? Dallas. Dallas. I I rep, you in Dallas, nigga. I rep, <laughs> I rep, I rep, I rep Just Florida, kidding. the state. You should. But I also, Dallas like my second home. Oh, yeah. God. Man, I yeah. just. This is where my comedy career started at out here. How old were you when you moved here? Uh, I was 24. 24. Also, you grown when you moved here. Down yeah. down Why there. did you move? Uh, I got out of prison. What? I did, yeah, I did four years in prison let's, in Florida. Let's be real on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, the day I got released, man, I went from my prison cell to the Greyhound Station straight to Texas, and I ain't look back. So uh, you when did I you move out here? Yeah, I got we gonna out. go back. We, we got to get in prison go talk. I want to hear how they yeah, do yeah, yeah. sitting in the cell, want to be <laughs> out no, looking but, nigga. You know what I'm talking But <laughs> what happened Why you even got in trouble in the first place? Shit, being a follower, selling drugs. And You're a dope boy. Robbing niggas and... Robbing niggas All this type of shit Big wheels Violating turning. probation Damn So how you end up in that Okay so were you raised With a mom and dad Did you have like Good influence around you I was the only child And what's so I'm glad you asked that Because me I was the first Near my cousin Joe I was the first nigga in my family that ever go to prison. Like mm. I was, I grew up in the church. My grandma was a pastor. My uncle was a choir director. Uh, my grandma, she's a pastor. I got another uncle. He's a minister. You know, I so everybody in the was choir. so mad at you when that happened. Yeah, they were mad, but it was like shit. Like I said, I grew up an only child, but spoiled. so, so they, I was spoiled. But spoiled. when my mama stopped that shit, it was like I became rebellious. rebellious. Like, nobody, See, wasn't nobody there? told him. Man. My dad, he, he, he. He was in the service. Like, what's so crazy? I feel like I'm living my dad life because I got a kid in Florida, you feel me? But I'm in Texas. 
But when I was growing up, I was in Florida and my dad was living in Texas. Oh wow! Yeah, let, so. let me ask you this: um, Do you feel like uh, most of these people been coming on our panel is, is niggas ex cons look like a lot of them come on? <laughs> a lot of them. You have you have some. You have some. That's why I'm trying to figure out. You know the I'm reasons why people get in trouble and do all of that is yeah. it because of the environment. What's a lot percentage? of them. Really, like the you ever heard? The, you know, you, what you what ever heard? Wait a minute, bro. I'm trying to get the environment, nigga. Y'all, oh, right. about eighty percent. Eighty percent. The people that's been in trouble. Damn. But, but you know what, though? I think okay. it's a little high. <laughs> no, no, like, no, no, no. That's been, been on, our, on our platform. Oh, yeah. No, but yeah. but the funny thing is, like, when I came here from Jamaica. It seemed like a lot of people make it seem normal to go to jail. I'm not saying um, prison, but normal to go to jail. It's like everybody that I've ever met has been to jail oh, yeah, one time. I'm like, how can you make that be normal? It, it's usually because of some traffic ticket or something like that. But I'm like, how can you make that normal? Like, yeah, I've been to jail. Black like, people. Because the term, I'm going to tell you, that term, product of my environment, that's like a real true term. And like once you get older and you understand how your uh -huh. mind works mm -hmm. and you know what's around you, you were under you was t like I tell myself every time like you know what I was supposed to go to jail and prison like nigga I ain't had no guidance no like influence the influence I did have was like rappers and shit and they were talking about the same shit I'm doing you feel me like that's why I'm doing it listening to these but especially is, but is it over though like like you you don't oh, yeah, yeah, crime yeah. no more yeah I ain't yeah, well I let's ain't. talk about it's your mindset it. though crime. yeah but I want to talk I'm gonna tell about you, when it. I when I when I was doing trouble when I was in, you in, was stealing. I was doing all type of shit, but I'm gonna tell you who the hottest artist was. Who? Rick Ross. No, he from Florida, but ain't everybody was listening to this nigga. Plies. That's what made you get hot about it. Boy, when he was Plies. here last night. Plies? Yeah. In Texas. For real? In, 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 in Dallas. Dallas. In Dallas. Yeah. Plies influenced a lot of niggas, boy, to go to jail and prison. Well, he, he, had, a, he had a song called jail, Crack Crack was Damning Niggas and stuff. He's trying to help you niggas. When man. I was turning myself yeah. in, I was turn, I was going to jail, turning myself in, listening to that nigga. Them Cracker Game, my little <laughs> niggas. Damn, my little niggas. 40 yeah. years. You feel me? Listening yeah. to that. No, yeah. like, damn, I'm finna be next. You, you know that song? Give me all these. No. No? No. But I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. I Jail, think it's like, an excuse, though. I really honestly think it's, it's an excuse. Look, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. Hold listen, on, listen. hold on, hold on. Because you have, you have people who've been raised in terrible environment, don't have no money, whatever, and still come out, don't end up selling drugs, don't end up doing this, and end up coming out good. So I why mean, is it that, yes, it's a few. Why you had to miss Why up. You know, it's a few. Right. It's a few, but why is it any percentage at all? Compared to you know the masses, so it is a possibility. Then you got you also got to think about like we being attacked. Like when I had got locked up, when I went to prison, like my initial violation charge was possession of cocaine, and the police officer he pulled out a little baggie, and I was out of dope, so I know I ain't had no cocaine. <laughs> I was going to re up. Long story short, I to this day I think that officer planted that shit on me. So yeah. like we still being attacked. So like, you didn't have no fingerprints on. Let's be real for a second. No, nah, I swear to God, I ain't had no fingerprints. I don't even. I wasn't even selling coke. I was selling coke crack. your thing. Yeah, yeah, I was selling. That crack. nigga had some real. He, that right, was his nigga personal had stand. A green bag. That was his personal stand. <laughs> right, right. I'm a be green real. bag of residue. And I'm like, bro, I don't even sell coke. I said crack. Like I don't even. Fuck you with told him man. that, huh? You told no, him I ain't said that, but that's what I was thinking. In your mind, and you're like, damn. And then my cousin was so late. This was the funny part about that story. The day I was getting arrested. Your cousin was in the car? Nah, my cousin, they were pulling up. My cousin, they all they all like to go steal. They go to the Tyrone Mall. They go steal and shit. So they pull up. They like seven deep in one car. So my cousin, like, she pulled up. She was like, let me get his car. Let me get his car. So I'm like, yeah, cuz, get my car. Get my car. Then when the police took me, like, pulled off with me, I was thinking, like, damn, I shouldn't have gave my cousin my car. Like, <laughs> they this bitch gonna go the steal car. all them hoes and get out. Uh, like, they finna what get. happened? What was the next episode? They went and stole. <laughs> but then your car, you got it back, though. Nah, my, they still had my car. It was, yeah. uh, it was a 96 bundle. That's a part of the game. That's your family, my nigga. That's nah, how we get that. Like, I like, yeah, I, no, cause in my head, I'm thinking like, I'm looking at her. I'm like, bro, she ain't, she don't want my car, cause she trying to help me. Like these hoes just deep in this one car, and like but that's your trying cousin. to get my shit. Still though, <laughs> I already know my that's cousin. That's your cousin, man. So, but that, long story short, I learned my lesson when I went to prison. 
I was in and out of jail like three, four times. <laughs> but I'm just wanting to go it back. It just took one time but for you, prison. You, but you was robbing and you and you uh, you robbed. Selling drugs. When you robbed, what did you do? I want to hear details on when it. I you don't rob no yeah. more. Nah, when I was robbing, I was just sticking up old white people. Like, That's I want, who you were getting. I wasn't running in traps and shit like that. Hell you the stick up kid to the I old. I was sticking up old white people. And how I got caught was like I used to be coming to school and shit, you know, buying, you young. A, buying the hoes, lunches, twisters, and cups of fries and all yeah, type of shit. Real so my, Mac Daddy. Yeah, so my homeboy, they're like, damn, where the fuck this nigga getting all this money from? He then, hating on you. Then, nah, they want hate. They just want to be down with the shit. You oh, feel yeah. me? So I ain't gonna lie, like the our first mission, I put them on. We get caught, and mm. that's how the jail and the prison and all that shit started. Cause I was doing that shit by myself for a while. For how long? For about like two, two, three months. You said long. I thought he was gonna say some years. Nah, I was. Not when they caught you, it was just like a little school. Though. It was a school thing. Like niggas just want to go to school with some money and fresh, and how, how they catch and you? And be though? able to not want to go. Like yeah. we got lost. I'm talking. The white man caught you robbing the white people. How did that happen? We got lost because we was in some subdivisions in Snail Island in Florida. And Snail Island is like a big ass subdivision, big mansions and all type of shit. You feel me? So when we go in that bitch, like we do our thing, and um, as we trying to get out, we basically just got lost. This is like before GPS, all that shit. So it's like we trying to find how the fuck we got up in this bitch. And by the time we get out, we going down the road. The police coming the other way. So we like, okay, boom. So then, like, we look back, they hit the lights and they hit a U turn, so they yoke behind us. We pull into the store, my homeboy jump out, my other homeboy jump out, my other homeboy, he jump out the back, and my stupid ass, I'm the only one with the child lock on. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga could not get <laughs> <laughs> Nigga could not get out. Can't catch a break. Boy, I could not, boy. And if they found one of my homeboys in a trash can. Yeah, of course. That's uh, where they get him. My at. God, brother, uh, Peanut, God bless the dead, he got away. He got he got killed. Like, I got out, I got out May 12th, 2006. He got killed May 31st, 2006. Wow. Mm. Yeah, uh, and then another nigga, Sherrod, uh, he actually got caught. He got locked up with me. And he got probation, just like I got probation. Okay. Um, so you get into prison. I mean, you scared because you ain't never been there before. Don't try to act hard. Don't yeah, rush yeah, yeah, yeah. Pri prison, no, I was you scared. First, yeah, you were scared. Nigga, you got on the yard. First day you get in there, you walk in. And, and how do they, what's the process in Florida? When you walk in, uh, in what Florida, do they do? In, like, Florida, in Florida, everybody go to uh, OCI. Is it a bus that drops y'all out? Yeah, that's in Orlando. Okay, let's you talk go about to, it. You in or, and um, when you first go to prison, like when I got my time in jail, I was happy. Cause you know, niggas be seeing their county jail, don't know when they finna People get out. People be happy to go to prison. That's yeah. everywhere, that's, that's nigga, all over. So when I got my time, like I was happy here. I'm like, yeah, I got four years, nigga. I know when I'm going home, yeah. I'm ready to go Did to prison. Did you do the whole four? Uh, I did the whole phone on purpose. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, let's rock. But I want to know about that first day when you got down there. Okay, when so nigga, the first, when them niggas, snuck, they like, who is that nigga right there? That nigga. Listen, the first day, yeah. Nah, the first day you get there, you go to OCI, you go to Orlando. That's the reception center. That's like where everybody go before they send you to your main camp. Okay. So when I get there, I'm 20. Ooh. So now nah, they, but so I'm considered a youth offender. Oh yeah. So it's like I go to the prison where it's 16 year old. And uh, 20, 20 year old, when you turn 21, you go to the like adult camp. You feel me? Yeah, you in so, the, But you really like an OG. Basically, but niggas, hell no, nah, these young niggas don't <laughs> young give a nigga fuck. Young niggas want to get to you, nigga. Boy, this shit like gladiator camp, because I remember growing up, my cousin Larry, he got 40 years right now, but he, he stayed in trouble. And Go ahead, keep going. And growing up, I remember. Growing up, I remember uh, my cousin. He used to be he used to be in and out these wild camps. And every time he come home, niggas always just want to slap boss and just fight niggas all yeah, the time. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. So when I when I'm at OCI, this this camp called Brevard. They were like, "Boy, you don't want to go to Brevard, boy. That's a gladiator camp, boy. Like you don't want to go there." At Ferguson in Texas, but keep going. And nigga, they sent me there. <laughs> I'm talking about niggas. Well, that be made you nervous. Well, yeah, niggas scared. Yeah, I'm gonna Look. knock one of these niggas out. You know? All the new inmates, we on the bus, we scared. Like, damn, we don't want to go to Bavard. But they, like, nigga, we know what's finna go on. Niggas is getting bay flighted up out this bitch down there every night type shit. You feel me? So I'm like, damn, I don't want to go to Bavard. So when we get to Bavard, you know, the first three days, everything cool. You feel me? So I'm like, yeah. oh, this shit all right. You feel me? Like, it is. <laughs> Yeah, like a walk in the park. Yeah, they give it a bad rap. This shit ain't what everybody think it's seen. So boom, 
nigga, I'm coming back. We coming back from the child hall, all the new inmates and shit like that. We get back from the child hall. I go in my locker, all my shit gone. So you feel me? Like nigga don't came by, nigga, nigga took the sheets and everything off my bed. Like just took all my shit out of my locker. And that's like it's called TOH, test the heart. This little yeah. shit, you feel me? They yeah. want to see what the fuck you finna do. Like you just just sit on your bed and be a bitch about it. Or if you finna go to the head, nigga, like ask them, like man, like what's up? Like who took my shit? Like whoever took my shit? Like we gotta catch the paint, catch the test wall type heart. shit. You test feel me? Heart. Yeah, yeah, TOH. You finna so, be cold as hell if you don't test a heart, nigga. Around this. Like my first two weeks. I was fighting. No, what'd you do when they took your sheets, nigga? That's that's gonna tell nigga, the truth I, about I, I got, I got, my, <laughs> nigga, I got my ass whooped. You went out there? Yeah, nigga. What you like, ask? Nigga, they tear my ass up. It, it was a bunch of Because the pound was ran by uh, ZMF, them Zo Mafia niggas. Zoe, okay. Zoe Mafia okay. Pound. I'm talking about them niggas tore my ass up, like, just for the simple fact, like you asking where your shit at, nigga. Like, nigga, we took that. Thank you, you yeah, nigga. Like, you, you ain't supposed to have no cheats when you come in this hole, <laughs> nigga. Nah, Sit but, down, little nigga. But, but after they told my ass up or whatnot, you feel me? Uh, I had got a one on one with the one of the nigga. I beat him up. Like, told yeah, his you, ass you, up. You like, asked yeah. that nigga for so, so it's like fair one. Because it's like, they going to beat your ass first. Then, like, okay, man, pick out somebody you want to fight, nigga. we going to get you one on one type shit. That's why I don't like that gang shit, because nigga. <laughs> nigga pick you Like now I was just trying to chill today But now you gotta fight To rep the gang and shit Like you don't know What this nigga got <laughs> I don't tow this nigga ass up In front of his brothers And shit <laughs> like that as hell, like So yeah, and then your brother be looking at you like, damn, you let this nigga neutral ass nigga beat your ass like <laughs> neutral this neutral ain't coming there and whooped you, nigga. But after that, like they give you your respect, they give you your shit back. Is it ain't a gang banging going on or is Boy, it ain't nothing but gang So was you a neutron or was you a Nah, there? I stayed a neutral cause my homeboy, they was part of the Zoe Mafia fan. That why I ain't that gang banging shit is is backward cause it's like Zoe Mafia family, like it's it's American. You niggas ain't Haitian. You all you niggas American. Then they got black Latin king. You niggas ain't Spanish. Like how you a Latin king? That's why. Oh, I, I, I ain't take none of that game banging shit serious in prison. So was, what did you? What did you do when you when you you finally get your respect? You whooped this nigga up. Okay, what's next? What? Do oh, you, after that, it was just number smoking. You start, you it was just number smoking, gambling, yeah. eating, and sleeping. Like my Yo. time went. Like when I turned twenty one. I had went to the uh, I got transferred to the adult camp. Now, you, you now I'm in here with niggas with niggas who doing life. Two year, who, two two lives in the yeah. Day. Niggas who don't been in this bitch since I was two. Type shit, you feel me? So now I'm on the adult camp, like with the real like. But on the adult camp, it's way more laid back than the wild camp because they ain't on that shit. Like they only fighting if you owe a nigga money or if you fucking with a nigga boy. You feel me? What was the craziest you know, thing? Though, why they fighting? In what prison. was the craziest thing that you seen when you was in a that nigga? With, fight for a nigga with titties. Way out like here, mother uh -uh. love. Yeah, what? nigga, titty was big than a bitch. I, I'm talking about big titty ass nigga. They had a boyfriend. Niggas be, niggas be getting married on the wreck yard. They got some shit called lovers lane. Niggas be melting Jolly Ranchers for lip gloss. Yeah, I know. Niggas be shaving off their eyebrows, getting permanent tattoo mm -mm. thin eyebrows. Yeah, in the in the offices, the correction officers, they be encouraging that shit. Wow. They be right there just Crazy. cheering them on. So you went, you was in it, and you you was in it. You had no other way out. What's the craziest thing you have seen somebody get into it over? A punk. That was the craziest thing. Yeah, like, I'm like, y'all really fighting over these niggas. What a nigga like, nigga, you messing with my hoe, bro? Like, it's just the fact, like, nigga watching, like you can't get caught watching a nigga, like. Doing this thing Like niggas is Actually dying in prison Over punks Niggas will kill your ass And back in the day Like when my cousin When my uncle and them Used to get locked up They used to come home Tell me their prison stories And shit like that They used to say like The punks Used to take care of the niggas In prison Like yeah the punk Like spend all this money To take care of the niggas When I Boy that shit Reverse Like thug niggas in there Taking care of the boys Damn So tricking on them that's crazy, ain't it? Boy, it's a whole thought? it's a whole different world in prison. Who'd have thought that they'd be in there uh I'm talking about them with niggas Jolly Ranchers and, and Cool Offs doing their thing. Them niggas, them niggas will fold their pants up, put the belt on and put it over their shoulder like a purse. All type of shit be walking around in their drawers. Do you do you really do you really did, I mean when you went down there, do you really think that, you know, like damn, did you did anything that you thought about prison? Was it anything that you had in your mind? Like, this is the way it's going to be? Hell nah, cause totally I, different. I remember I used to watch that movie. Uh, and what movie that is? Locked up, locked up. Remember yeah, that yeah, nigga yeah, Stacy yeah. from the woods? Yeah. When he got, I used, boy, I, that's what I used to think prison was like. 
You feel me? Then when I went to prison, I'm like, it ain't nothing like that. This really, it, prison is really like the project. If you ever lived in the projects, that's what prison like. Yeah, yeah. You had prison, to just the like time. the project. Exactly right. So let's come out of prison right now. So when you left, um, you say you went on a Greyhound bus, came straight to Texas. D- your dad was still out here when you came? No, nah, my dad actually was living in Florida. And before I started, uh, when I was on probation and shit like that, after my first time getting out of jail, I actually tried to live with my dad because he had um, moved back to St. Pete. Mm-hmm. But every week, this nigga had the excuse of why I had to leave. Just like trying to kick me out. You he like, no. Nope. Yeah, he didn't want me around because he felt like I was fucking up his flow. He used to have women coming over and yeah. it was a one bedroom. Yeah, so man, you, how old are you at this time? I was 18, 19 at the yeah, time. You feel yeah. me? So mm-hmm. this so, before. So who uh, was in before Texas? Prison. Yeah, that would be, that, this that was, was like while I was uh, like on probation. On, probation. on probation and shit like that. You feel me? Yeah. But so why Texas? Why you came out of Texas? Who did you come mom, to? Because my mom, um, my mom was living in Texas. You feel me? Like, uh, I lived in Jacksonville from 6th grade to 10th grade but then that shit ain't work out in Jacksonville so my 11th and 12th grade year I had moved back to St. Pete and then that's when the trouble had started okay. so 2010 I had got locked I went to prison from 2008 to 2012 so in 2010 my mom had moved to Texas so she was like you know when you get out just move just here come I'll up help here. you get on your feet that's why I left my prison from the um, I went from the um jail se- prison cell to the Greyhound station straight to Texas, and I ain't look back. And so I got out without like over four hundred songs. I was rapping. I wanted to be a rapper. I know you had wanted to be a rapper because I seen that song. I don't that never do viral. nothing at work, or not, you know. Yeah. What was it? It's like that's crazy because he had his mindset on rapping, just like a lot of people. Jamie Fox wanted mm-hmm. to be a, 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 a he wanted to be a singer. Then he ended up being an acting. actor, so it'll flip on you. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. But then you came out, and um, is that when the rapping started first, or then or the com- comedy started? Yeah, the rap. I got out like well over four hundred songs. I was rapping. And what like, did you I do? Was, with it? You just went and started. Nah, I was I was actually pursuing that shit. I had dropped in like, Dallas. Yeah, I had dropped like three mixtapes. I got like videos on Vivo. Why like, you didn't get that feature from from Puka Lira? I don't know shit. That's he I didn't pursue know. it. I was really look. I got real good quality videos on YouTube still, like a Vivo channel. Like I was really pursuing that shit and what. But nothing popped off. Well, yeah. What made me stop? What got me into comedy? Because I always wanted to sign with Ti. Like that's my favorite. I rapper. seen that on the interview. You said that tip. Yeah. You see the nigga about thirty times on the wall right there. Yeah, but he yeah tipping me. Yeah, now now yeah, let's I talk. About, about yeah, let, yeah, you with my kids right there. Let's talk about Ti for a second. Yeah, because did you ever meet Ti? Man, I'm finna show you how. I'm finna tell you how everything come full circle. You know, you know Ti doing comedy right. Correct, now. he doing so listen, comedy. So, boom, but when I, you started, he wasn't doing exactly, comedy at that time. So, boom, listen. And where my backpack at? Go get my backpack out the car. I got the CD and I got to show y'all the case. Yeah, the let's talk cover. about it because Tip Tip is a. Uh, you know, if you met T.I., he come in, you know, he come in with that, with that, hey, man, you know what I mean? He comes in, he's a very professional dude, mm-hmm. but even from, from the time I known him, because I knew him by, by cool, by the clothing that we yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. the only thing that, that me and this nigga together. I seen that in and, uh, But I always had a mad respect and... and, and now, I was a little mad at him about the flip thing. That, that, that When I first oh, yeah, met yeah, him, yeah, 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 I was yeah. able to get past that, but it was like, damn, that nigga... That's the nigga that did that with Flip. Now I'm a Texas hardhead, so but as I watched his journey, I started to say this nigga bad. Like lyrically, this is a bad dude, man. And then business wise, I seen the moves as a dude from the South to come from where he came from. I started looking at the growth potential, and then he got locked up. So I felt sympathy too. I'm like, damn, my nigga mm-hmm. gone again, you know? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <"Niggas> again, because <laughs> he came home yeah. and we was, we flew to uh, we flew to the Takers premiere when he was there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, we like was that in, movie. I was I in L.A. Yeah. I went to L.A. and we, matter of fact, my wife and Tiny up there at the top on that picture, and I was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, we here with the boy, you know? He got the he got the uh, uh, you know, all these actors. That was when old boy that died. What was his name? Paul, uh, Paul, Walker. Paul, Walker Paul Walker and all yeah, them yeah. boys was together and I was like man it's gonna be great for Tip cause he just coming home you know what I'm saying and that nigga got arrested again right after that and so then I, the movie in the movie it, it portrayed him like as he was just getting out yeah Don't yeah it was up. dope yeah, and, yeah. And, and so when you look at what where he came from and then being in that journey with him and meeting him all those times that we met 
I always enjoyed his his whole movement, mm-hmm. man. And then then what really helped it was people like Lisa, Ralph, uh, Mike, uh, Mark, uh, Jerry, all of the people at RP Fifty Five Group, and and that Jeter guy, Jason Jeter, whatever. Jason Jeter. Yeah, yeah, all those people that was around him, I was linked with those people. So it didn't matter what he done. The group of people in that family at RP Fifty Five and the clothes that we were selling made me respect him. Even Kenyatta, like, they made me, I, I had to move with the movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they were posting me on the cool page. I wasn't popular at the time. They made a nigga feel like he was somebody mm. dealing with him. So, yeah, I, I always ride with T.I., man. I always ride with his entrepreneurial yeah, that's spirit. Yeah, my favorite rapper. So, let me hear the story on how come, how T.I. dissed you. Oh, I heard a little bit about it. Let me know what happened on that. Side, the backpack is here. Let's talk about yeah, Tip for a minute. He, he technically dissed Did he me. Diss you? He just inspired me. You to, know what I uh, said? He just <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to make it all. That nigga left you, nigga. He just inspired me to. Uh, nah, Tip or not. He's he a cool kind of. cat, man. He make, he make you. He make you. Uh, he make you laugh because of his boy. He showing up prideful when it come down to his family, and not trying to play by his name. Boy, he gon' he a diss a, that nigga a hell of a diss song. Uh, that nigga a diss a nigga in a minute. That nigga can rap about a nigga, boy. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. So listen, so it was it was 2000. It was 2016. 2016. Yeah, I he, was rocking with him back then. Yeah, he was uh, he was coming to Onyx for his birthday in October. Was that 2016, babe? When, no. he, when he came to when Onyx, Onyx okay. for his birthday, like I never forget, I was outside waiting on this nigga about two and a half, three hours. Trade Trade of Truth was out there. He the one told me that he was gonna come. He was gonna like plug me in with him when he pulled up. So when he pulled up, you know he pulled up in the black truck. He had a driver. Somebody was in the front. It was a girl in the back, and then you know he was in the um he was sitting behind the passenger seat. So he was like, all right, there you go. Trey was like, there you go right there. You know, I'm finna let you holler at him and stuff like that. So he walked me over there to the car. He walked me over there to the window. So my it's his birthday. So at this time, me and my homeboy, we was like wearing foxtails and shit like that when nobody wearing them and shit like that. So I had went in the Hobby Lobby, bought this nigga like a old exclusive ass case, put the foxtail in there and gave it to him as a gift. I told him happy birthday and shit. And then I gave him my CD. The nigga looked at the CD, he chuckled to him and said, he was like, hmm, you sure you want me to listen to this? I was like, hell yeah, listen to my shit. So then he put the CD down in the uh, in the gift. He put it down in the in the seat. You feel me? So when he got out of the car, only thing only thing I'm thinking like, yeah, but when he get back in his car, he gonna, he gonna look over, he gonna look over, and he probably gonna tell his driver to put that shit in. They gonna sign, he gonna listen to it, then he gonna sign me in like two months. I was like, I'm gonna give him two months. Like if he gonna call me in two months, I know what it is, but I like I know he gonna call me. I'm like I'm signing the hustle game type shit. And then, and then the CD I did, it was his Urban Legend cover. Let me but, see the CD. But but I just redid the cover. Let me so this see. this why he chuckled. This the CD I gave him. And it's called Damn. best. And it's called best name since Till. And Ti behind. That's my face, nigga. No, nah, in the back here. Nah, nah. That you. But you know, on Urban Legend, if you look up his Urban Legend album, yeah, it's just like that. Hold so on, you finna. basically you look it up for me. I'm finna. I'm finna say. Yeah, yeah. This nigga here thing. He think he finna just go blow. He got a whole procedure. Yeah, Cause when you see his cover, when you see the Urban Legend, I seen the Urban Legend cover. You gonna I see? I seen it. I gonna, remember it. You gonna see why he chuckled to his uh, nigga? Looked at that shit like, <laughs> nigga. You sure you want me to listen to this? I'm like, like you got yeah. to yo. You better be coming with it, nigga, to put your face on my face and be doing all this you doing. Nah, that ain't my face on his face. I went and no. actually bought all the shit he had on, on and put it on. Oh wow. Yeah. You and I remember distance. the cover. Let me see. You you recreated the whole. Damn. Yeah, I recreate recreated the nigga whole name. That's yeah, I'm sure is. That show was it. He mm. put that whole together for himself like this. <laughs> <laughs> but Tip thought he had a damn. What the hell is this nigga doing? It had to take him by storm, bro. I it wish did. I could interview Tip and ask him. And get you on the phone and say, man. I still like it. What's so crazy? You ain't talked to him about this yet? And we, I'm finna get to that. This Boy, nigga, this nigga, gonna, don't, this nigga bro, don't put, look, in Atlanta. I feels to tell this nigga. Look, I get to talk to this nigga one day. Man, in Atlanta, this nigga is two time in Atlanta. And two, it's two time he don't perform right after me on some comedy shit. Just coming in, working on his shit. You feel me? He don't remember. He don't remember 
I ain't never told him, but I ain't never told him this let's, story. Let's I ain't never told him he the reason I'm doing comedy. Hell no, nah, nigga. I'm finna put this hoe up, nigga. Y'all nigga. gonna take a picture. You got two of these or this the only one? That's my only one. Yeah, nigga, let me take a picture of this. This here is hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nigga, you think you just gonna get on a hustle gang with, with yeah, nigga, you a hell of a I thought that was the way in, too. I was but like, you yeah, did sure good, though. Hundreds. I liked the idea. I love the idea. I love the idea, bro. I ain't finna lie to you. That dope to me. I ain't gonna lie. I love a hustle. I was like, yeah, if I show this nigga homage, he'll sign me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that shit did not yeah, work. Yeah, that, that nigga got the CD here, nigga. That nigga did that. I'm a matter of fact, ooh, I'm gonna put his by, beside yours, nigga. This better be a hell of an interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gonna see this nigga? Hey, I'm gonna tag that nigga. You ain't gotta worry about it no more. I, I ain't finished this. No, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna be meddling there, nigga. I'm gonna put it up, nigga. Yeah, y'all want it. You don't want it bad as my nigga wanted me. Calamar come through this. Oh, he ain't playing. Y'all niggas play too much. Nah, I was really out there. So, so let's go with the story. So, so yeah, uh, I give him the CD. Like I said, he put it in uh, back seat or whatnot. So, like I said, on the whole time, I'm just thinking like, boy, when he get after this party, when this nigga get back in his car, I already, I just planned it in my head. I'm like, he gonna look at the CD, he gonna give it to his driver, and he gonna tell the driver to play it, and they gonna ride it, listen to it to the hotel, and then this nigga gonna call me and like want to sign me. So I was like, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it two months, sixty days. Man, nigga, about nine months went by. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm depressed. I'm just like, and at this time, I'm looking at my girl, my baby mama. I just looked at her and like, man, bitch, I'm finna start talking about your ass. You got me fucked. <laughs> like, it's your fault, nigga, ain't prospering. So I just wrote a whole bunch of material about like what me and my girl was going through. And then, um, I just took that shit to um to an open mic, but before I went to the open mic, I was telling niggas at my job, I'm like, bro, I'm finna start doing comedy, cause I always been a funny nigga. You feel me? Like people always told me I was funny, but I just didn't never like know how to do comedy. And I remember watching stand up comedy, but I just didn't get it. So I was calling around different comedy clubs to see like who allow you to be yourself, cause I used to hear like, yeah, some comedy club they don't allow you to say nigga. Some don't even want you cursing. So I had to like call around different comedy clubs who would let me be myself. And the Arlington Improv was the only one like who let you come in there and just be yourself. So I went to the Arlington Improv. I went up there like two weeks just to check it out. Cause like my first time I went up there like I ain't go perform. I just wanted to check it out, see how this shit go. Add all the comments, they get four minutes. So long story short, man, I went to the Arlington Improv you know, like the state of that shit, and I seen how many people wasn't getting no laughs. I was like, bro, I can do it. But I know I can make somebody in this bitch laugh. Like, they ain't getting no laughs. You feel me? So the next week I went back, it was October 17, 2017. You remember exactly. Yeah, that. my first time ever performing. And like I've been performing ever since. So when you I killed that bitch. So too. really you in your in your heart, you think T.I. drove you to mm -hmm. comedy? Yeah, cause it was like I ain't, dep he depressed you yeah, that much. I ain't want to. I ain't want to sign with nobody else but Ti. Cause that was my favorite. He's still my favorite rapper. He's still your favorite. I ain't want to sign with nobody but Hustle Gang or Grand Hustle. So when really? he when he yeah, signed me, he ain't gonna get it. He gonna find a different then career. I, then I told myself, I told myself, I ain't want to be one of them niggas who's still trying to rap while they old. So I was like, I'm gonna get my. Cause when I got out of prison, I told myself. Like when I got out 2012, I told myself I'm gonna give myself five years in this rap shit anyway, and if it don't work, I'm gonna just find something that. And just so happened, five years was up in 2017, and I started coming. Damn, why well, y'all tell you that's a good story, man? Yeah, I and like I, and like I say, I be seeing T. I see T.I. all the time in Atlanta. You like, walk on, on the yeah. comedy, and he on the still don't know. Circuit. He don't know I, that you I that guy. I never to told, him. told him. I'm gonna tell, no, tell him though. No, you don't know after this. I'm gonna tell him. I promise you. I'm gonna tell him. That's crazy. But what's so crazy, like, I'm... Big T.I. fan. A big T.I. fan, and, like, the doors that I was wanting to open up for rap, it's like all them doors opening up, like, in the comedy game. I don't think I I would have ever been this. What big. song that 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 you sung on your on your on that CD that sound like something like T.I. would have dropped? Uh, switch it up. Um. I got a song in there called uh, "For Years." He had. He I had, just smashed that girl. You've been wanting for years. So, so, so Duro, Duro, not Duro. I'm sorry. Why did I say Duro? Uh, what's that dude name? Man, dang! I said Duro because I was thinking about Duro. What's the dude that was on uh, the nigga that performed the other night? The the, the, the artist that be with him all the time. Trans Lee. No, the one that his artist. B O B. 
No, not T.I. artist. Yeah, the one be with T.I. all the time. Dro. Young Dro, yeah, yeah. Dro. Yeah. That's, that's more of my favorite rappers, too. Dro. Shout out Dro. to Dro. That's why I was talking. Dro, this nigga here. Nah, he. Dro changed his life. Dro hustled hard, though. Dro, Dro was with T.I. and he. I'm thinking of time, the time when you was trying to get on with him. Dro uh, uh, Dro wasn't, wasn't really in the picture like He wasn't that. in the picture then Who was in the picture then Somebody was there It was them new niggas That's why I felt so confident I was like bro I know I'm finna sign with Hustle Gang Cause I'm looking at his roster I'm like bro These what, niggas ain't hard bro. What was the guy that passed away Doby uh, Do, Doby was hard Doby, nah, That nigga was Doby hard was Doby hard. was hard But that, that, during that time Doby was Grand Hustle yeah, that so one. T.I. had T.I. had some new shit called Hustle Gang. That was like the new. Yeah, label. Know, yeah, that's what I was trying to be on because I was looking at his rise. I'm like, bro, this nigga Tokyo Jets probably about the hardest one on that bitch, and she a girl. You supposed to been on that thing. That's what I'm saying, and that depressed my boy. Boy, that's like we back now, nigga. Life, but this nigga did not sign me. <laughs> <laughs> Push me straight in the comedy. And you got and and so comedy is a thing where okay, I had a. a Phase on Love on here. And one of my most viewed interviews, people think it's the Charleston White, but it's not no more. It's uh Michael Anthony. Mm. Michael Anthony from Florida. But is he from Florida too? Michael Anthony. No, he was from he from where he from where what's the name from? Yeah. He yeah. from where uh LeBron James from. But he Akron. Yeah, Akron. Akron. But he with he's with uh Country Wayne. Uh-huh. He's a tall, bald headed guy. He go with Roe on there. He the he been on here. Uh-huh. And uh um that's my most viewed uh and I'm I'm saying this for a reason. That's my most viewed episode. But the reason he was on here was because Faison and Love had spoke on Country Wayne. One of the reasons he spoke on that's what made that go so viral. But it was because the the comedians like y'all, you guys are doing skits, you guys are doing all type of stuff. And, right. and and but but Faison was saying no nah, that don't make that really don't make no money like like they ain't got no real money my friends are on the Forbes list and this thing blew up and I wanted to get your take on the fact of like uh, the transitional phase of comedy then and comedy now now Com- Columbus Sharp was on the side of Faison where he said and I ain't even put that out yeah I need to put that out he was like yeah. Uh, uh, they get residuals and they got moved. They they got they got a big bag for that. So where how do you look at it? And when you look at the country Wayne, when country Wayne might come on, he said country Wayne making four hundred some thousand dollars a month off of skits. And just just the fact you got an internet presence, other people won't want to book you. Like so, let me know where you stand on it. How you feel about? Are you trying to get into the new wave or the old I'm gonna wave? tell you. Listen, when I first started comedy. Uh, I was like strictly stand up, you feel me? And I was against because I ain't had like when I came in the game, I ain't had no guidance. He was against kids. I ain't had no guidance, so I was listening to the old school niggas. So I was. Who what old niggas was you listening to? Uh, I ain't gonna say no name, but they older, <laughs> older comedians. Oh, well, you here. don't want to put them out there? Nah, nah, nah. But, but they wasn't. They was sticking to their whole game too, and they wasn't yeah, trying to they, move. And they ain't nowhere right now. So listen, but they wasn't trying to move into this new lane. Nope. Okay. So listen. So. So I was like, I was, I was on the shit they was on. I'm like, yeah, fuck all these internet comedians. These niggas ain't, these niggas taking the ease away out. And they ain't really out here in the trenches hitting the clubs and all. So I was on that shit. I'm like, yeah, fuck them niggas. So like when I first came in the game, I was young, new. So I was on flyers back to back every week. I was on the show, but then once I started becoming a threat, like niggas started taking me off their shows or whatnot. Then I just became one of them old. Facebook meme niggas Niggas just on Facebook All day just posting memes And shit like that So I'm like Damn boy I gotta figure out What I'm gonna do And then um, I started making Little funny songs And shit like that And the never do shit at work When I made that video That was my first time Ever going viral How many did that do? That bit did like I wanna say like Over at least All the people combined Who shared it I wanna say like Over 30 million Wow Cause Snoop Dogg shared that bit made it on the Breakfast Club. Congratulations! Like that bit was everywhere. You feel me? This is my first time ever going viral. So it's like, damn, like I can get used to this nigga. I need to mm-hmm. like make a little presence on the internet, build a little presence up. Then I started. That's when I taught myself how to do skit. Cause I always wanted to know like how niggas was doing that voiceover shit. They'll make a video, then they had like a voiceover of the video. I, I always want to know how to do that. So then when I got the iPhone, it came like you know with iMovie. 
And then I was like just playing on it. And then I seen some shit that said voice, like the option voiceover. I was like, oh, this how they been doing it. Then my first skit, it was about like uh me saying grace and um God interviewing and like he don't like it was a voice from God. Like he ain't trying to hear that shit. Like, nigga, you ain't been praying to me. Now you get a little money, get some food, you wanna say grace now type shit, you feel me? So I had God like just going off on me and shit, and that had kind of took off. So then my whole mind frame changed. I'm like, bro, the internet is where it's at. Fuck me, what these old school <laughs> niggas talking about, nigga. Nigga, the internet, where is that? Because I know, like, once you build a, a presence on the internet, that's when, like, the comedy club start calling. Because it be a lot of, I don't perform with a lot of internet niggas, like, who blew up off the internet, and then they get them calls from the club, and then when I go perform with them, they got to be on stage for, like, 45 to then an hour, and then it just... Bullshit They ain't got nothing Cause they come from the internet Yeah You feel me Yeah But that's why I be telling people I got the advantage at Cause I started off At stand up Then I transitioned To the internet So once my internet Shit build up And then the comedy club Start calling It's gonna be a wrap Cause Let me like tell you something. I've been doing stand up This shit I, ain't nothing I went to see Bubba Dub Man and Bubba Dub He started off On the internet That nigga show Bro It was packed Wall to wall In that hole And he was Trash And that nigga was Nigga, that nigga was going in. That nigga fought a year. So and, they, and they loved it. And he did this. He did this for about an hour or so. Th- didn't he do that for mm-hmm. a long time? 40, 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. 40 minutes. So he was, he did his whole set. He had broad show love to all the people that was with him on his set. And That was that the first show, show that, like that that was ever sold out. Yeah, but that, but that was the first one where he headlined it, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I do know he went hard that time. And then he he be booked all the time, though. He booked everywhere. Mm-hmm. But it was just his show that, that he... he I felt proud of him in that moment, man. And and though, so I understand it can go both ways. Yeah, once you go out there and you execute, and shit, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But when you go out there and you don't execute, you go to thinking like, damn, if I drop another video, these people gonna like my videos still because they don't <laughs> see your ass live. You ain't making them last or not. That shit really fuck with a nigga like. Mental and shit. So a lot of people give up. On how did you up. feel when Will came up there and slapped Chris Rock like that? Being that you be on that stage like that. Only thing I took away from it, I just hated that Chris Rock showed up with nothing but face. You know, that nigga ain't have no mustache, no beard, no. The <laughs> hell no, is going on? No goatee, no nothing. Like he was just ready for the drama. Like, so you think it was staged? Nah, I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the slap man was it staged? I don't know because I don't slap the nigga. I don't slap the comedian before on the stage like that. Nah, just on some other shit. But it just like I'm gonna give it from like a real person perspective. Like ain't no ain't no coming back from that. Like Chris Rock, you trying to make jokes now and all this shit talking about you got slapped by the softest nigga that ever the softest nigga that ever rapped. Like nigga, what that make you? The softest nigga that ever laughed. So like it just don't make it, it don't make sense to me. And it was like once you get slapped, bro, I don't care like how big your name is and only white people finna like accept you and respect you and like like trying to come back to the black community and all that shit. Like we just look at you. Don't like, you nah. think he already had done already? That's what home? I'm saying. Like you been left the black yeah. community, so it's like that's why. I don't, that's why I think like nobody really confronted Will because it's like that nigga really won one of the away. Oscars. Did they say he can't come back for ten years? Yeah, but nigga don't give a fuck about that shit. <laughs> like coming back to the Oscars for ten years. Like nigga don't care about that shit. So so, but, but it's just like, bro. It's like you ain't gonna never be the same again, Chris Rock. Like, I get it. Everybody gonna like like whatever you do, you can have the biggest accomplishment in the world, but in the back of everybody's mind, like, damn nigga, you 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 let Will slap your ass. You ain't do nothing. Damn it, boy. What about I gotta ask you the top three uh uh comedians of all time. Right? Top three. I, I got a top five. No, I don't do top five on here. Top three. Top three, I'm gonna go with no, Mike, Mike Mike Epps. Mike Epps, Lil Duval, and Adam Sandler. Wow, Adam Sandler. He snuck in there. No Will Ferrell? Nah. Okay, top five, James No, Fox. I don't want to hear about that top five stuff, but I want to talk about these top three, though. Yeah. I want to talk about these top three. Why Why? Uh, Michael Epps? Mike Epps was the first stand-up I ever seen. Like, when I was with, um, I mean, I was like 12 or 13. 
watching that shit with my um, auntie, my auntie Tina. She loved my ill. And we were watching that uh, a stand up when he had on a baby blue shirt and he did a uh, Montel. Who the talk show host? Montel Jordan or Montel Williams? Montel Williams. Montel Williams. And he did that Montel Williams impression. And it just had my auntie dying laughing. So then, ever since then, like, I've been fucking with my ill. Then I think a little shortly after that, he dropped next Friday. And then it was just a rap and that. All about the is my favorite movie. I watch that shit. Me too. All the time. I love, it's I on love Tubi Mike now too. Love Mike Epps, man. Then Lil Duval. I, I met said, this little nigga. Let me just say that. Yeah, I, I always see Clay, his manager, in the project. But you know why I met him, right? Through T.I. Yeah, yeah right. They've been running. They came up together. That's the first time I ever seen Lil Duval was in Vegas at the, uh, I believe we was at the Caesars Palace. I got a picture of that nigga. He had dreads. <laughs> Yeah, they, they had dreads. They came up together. That's why it's no surprise that T.I. want to do comedy now. Because it's like, nigga, you've been around you've been that, around shit that nigga years. a long time. I know that. When I think about, when I met him, I think it was 09, 2009. Mm-hmm. And him and uh, him and Lil Duval was together. I remember when I told Lil Duval, because I had seen Lil Duval on Comic View. Mm-hmm. And uh, is it Comic View? Or he was on BET. Just a little, though. He wasn't. He, he, did, he, uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have a lot song. of buzz. But me and him, I said, man, let me take a picture with you. When I took a picture with that nigga, he say, he say, T.I., I told you, nigga, I'm getting famous. That's how long ago it was that me and him took that picture. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I've been, Lil Duval, he he my top three because I've been following uh, Lil Duval since 2000 when I moved to Jacksonville. You know. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, Jacksonville, Duval is just Duval County. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. That's why he called himself Duval. Duval. It's the county for Duval. I so, mean, it's the county for Jacksonville. So when I moved to Jacksonville, sixth grade to tenth grade, that was like two thousand. This nigga had dropped a skit. I mean, a CD full of skit. It was called Rolling Power. That boy funny. I'm talking about like you know how the these comedians be on the the skits with the internet, but this nigga been doing that shit. He like, did on, it first on DVD. I want. I don't know first because. Uh, you got Richard Pryor, Dave yeah, Chappelle. Yeah, they yeah, were yeah. doing, they were doing it too. But I'm talking like on some like street comedy type shit. Like, bro, I'm talking about this shit was in down there everybody household in Jacksonville. This DVD called That Boy Funny. It was none but skits on that bitch. So I, ever since then, I've been following Lil Duval since like 2000. That's why he my top two. And then Adam Sandler, I fuck with Adam Sandler because he my top three because he do. He 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 doing what niggas want to do, like how you got your homeboy and all your movies. Like mm-hmm. every movie Adam Sandler do, you gonna always see them niggas from Waterboy. That's what that's where you remember them from. You feel me? Like damn, I remember that nigga from Waterboy. Damn. Nigga with the laser eye. Like he put all his homeboys oh. in all his so movies. He the, Le- he the LeBron and, James actor. And that nigga stand up funny. Like you go on Netflix and watch Adam Sandler stand up, but that nigga funny. Bro. Going in. And Man. I judge niggas by they stand up like that. That internet shit, I don't really judge people on they funny by like the internet. Cause anything you see on the internet, a skit, you can do, you can do. Cause you ain't like, say like you record and you don't like some shit. All you gotta do is just like, you know what? I don't like that and do it over. Do it over. Mm-hmm. But on the stage, nigga, it's just one take. You feel me? That's it. So that's why I judge people like, like if I, if I see a nigga funny, it's because I seen his stand up and he made me laugh. Not cause I seen you, I watched your videos and you like, nah, that shit don't matter. I wanna go back to, I, I don't ever do shit at work. What made you write it? Like, like, and what was the process and what was you think? Were you thinking to go viral with that? I, I wasn't, uh, when I, um, right. I had an Android phone. You feel me? This was around the time when niggas stopped taking me out their show. I had to figure out what I wanted to do. So the girl I was messing with at the time, she bought me an iPhone. It was an iPhone 6. Matter of fact, it was the phone. I showed, matter of fact, this phone right here. This the phone. I still got this on you, feel me? Because I'm talking about work done been put on this phone. So No, it's a souvenir. You you remembering the girl. Nah, 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 (laughs) nah, nah. nah. So I seen that when I got the phone, I seen it came with an app called GarageBand. And you know GarageBand, that's a music app where you make beats, you record. Basically, you make songs on that bitch, you feel me? So I was like, damn, okay, what I'm going to do is... Cause I'm always walking around the house just singing stupid shit to myself anyway. So I'm like, I'm finna just put this shit on. I'm finna make some beats. Now I'm tapping back into my musical shit because, like I said, I wanted to rap. So I'm, like, I'm finna tap back into my music shit. So I'm gonna just make the beats and all this stupid ass shit. I'll be walking around the house saying, I'm gonna just put. I'm just 
put it on the song, but it's just gonna be the hook. I ain't making no song, it's just gonna be the hook, and then I'm gonna put a video with it. So the first video I did, it was about like, how women break up with men, we really don't be caring. Just like, make sure you leave us some money, make sure we good and shit before you move on type shit. So I dropped that video, and mind you, when I dropped the video, I had deactivated all my social media. You feel me? And I was like, I don't want to get back on social media till I got 48 songs. And the reason why I chose 48 songs is because when I get back on social media, I want to be able to post one a week for a year straight. Oh. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I want to come back like with some product type shit. So boom, like I say, I get back, no warning, no nothing. Like, hey, y'all, I'm back. Like, I'm, and you feel me? Like, it was just straight product. So it's drawing and gave when I post the video is drawing engagement like people liking it people coming but i never got caught in the hype because i was always thinking about boy like yeah y'all think y'all like this nigga wait the next week i got a whole year for y'all that wait the next week so long story short the third week go i was making all these songs at work you feel me because i work i work monday through thursday i work the third shift <laughs> that's crazy i work the third shift from 10 p.m to 8 a.m monday through thursday so I'm making the song. I'm making these songs at work. So I'm at work. I'm making the beat. So I'm, I like, I'm like, because I like to create at work type shit. So I'm making the beat. So as I'm making the beat, I'm just damn like, bro, I like, I don't do shit at work. Bing, I'm in this bitch <laughs> making music like that. You feel me? So now I'm like, damn, I don't ever do shit at work. I don't, so now I'm just like, now I'm like, okay, like, now I'm saying, I'm saying that shit to the beat though. And like I'm on, I'm actually on the fort lift. That's why that part come up, but ride up and down these goddamn out. Like that's what I'm doing. I'm just making the beat, just riding up and down the out, just stealing company time like a motherfucker. So, <laughs> so when I record that shit, so when I record it, now I'm playing it back. Now I'm riding around the warehouse just listening to it. I'm like, damn, this whole kind of hard. Like, because the video off in the post for that week, I was like, you know what, nigga, I'm coming back to work tomorrow with my pillow, blanket, all the props. I'm gonna shoot a video on this bitch, nigga. I'm gonna post this hoe. So, That's nigga, dope. So Did you nigga, ever get fired because of it? They fired me. <laughs> they fired me, but it, it was because of that, but it wasn't because of that. They fired me because. I wasn't showing no remorse. Like I'm in the HR office, I'm bragging on the video. <laughs> I'm like, you so, so they found, so they found out about the video. Yes, they like they. I'm, it went how viral. Did, how, oh, look, so this how it went viral. Like when I had posted the video, after I had came back to work with the blankets and the pillows and shit. <laughs> Like I had, Love it. I recorded the video. I was lit. I'm like, oh, this hoe kind of funny. Like I'm gonna post this hoe today. Yeah. So when I posted it, I just posted it for my friends to see. So my mama, she was the first one to come, and she was like, son, take this down. You know, somebody might be praying on you down for they might show your job, whoop whoop, and all this shit. Then my homegirl, queen and comedian, she double back right after my mom. She like, bro, make this shit public. This shit gonna go viral. <laughs> this gonna go so in. now it's like I got the devil and the angel on my show. I'm like, damn, which one I wanna do? But when I made that whole public, like, that's why I'm here today. Like, that shit just took off. That whole shit. How long did it take for your job to find out about it? It took them, like, three days. And I Dang, knew. Dang, that and, quick? And yeah, and I knew it because, like I say, uh, I worked from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. And we had a 6 to 2.30 shift. So when the 6 o'clock shift get in, like, they air, they just looking at they they, they just looking, shaking their head like, <laughs> boy, you wild, boy. <laughs> So I'm like, well, I already know what they talking about. So then when 8 o'clock comes, like, I'm about to get off at 8, you feel me? But that's when, like, because we had so many shifts. So when 8 o'clock come, like, right before 8, I guess HR, they made it their business to come in early today. Like, yeah, uh, Cal, I hear uh, on the speaker phone, Calamar White to the uh, human resource office, please. Calamar you knew what White. it was then. But I knew what it was. So they were like, uh, yeah, uh, about this video. <laughs> so I pulled it out I'm like damn y'all see the views People that saying going in. But I'm like I'm bragging on the video I'm like bro People saying this is National Anthem Like what y'all ain't seeing Instead like Are you serious But you I'm, didn't show the company's name Or nothing like that right I had the shirt on Oh You <laughs> mean, But you really can't see it Cause we can wear what we want to wear. wear But I just so happened to have A company mm -hmm. shirt on that day You feel me and, and what did she say She said well we're not gonna They I'm, were like we're gonna give you a call 
we let you know like what we decide. We they didn't tell you to take it, it down. It will keep you or not. So when they gave me a call, they were like, "Yeah, we just gonna have to let you go due to the fact you show no remorse." Like mm. that's why they fired me because I ain't show no remorse. You shouldn't. You celebrating, right? They you wanted me. Made it. They wanted me to be in there. Like, damn, I'm, I'm bad. Sorry. I shouldn't have did yeah. that. But I'm in there bragging on the video. <laughs> 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 oh man, at this time Wait. everybody's like, damn. Plus, then again, I I ain't care because I'm like, nigga, this Texas, I got. I know how to drive all the Fort Lewis. Nigga ain't shit to get a job. So when here. you when you when you w- did you did they say anything like like uh, take it down or nothing like that? Nah, they ain't tell me to take okay. it down. So they they did. just they enforced the new rule though. Uh, no cell phone. <laughs> yeah, because they, of you Yeah they, they They made a no cell phone Policy on the floor Man I, I like it Because you You lived out your destiny mm-hmm. Now you're doing your dream You full time comedian yep. And a lot of people I used to work with They still hit me under the day Like damn boy You doing it boy You like, did yeah, it. I know Man that, that's a blessing man That you even be You was able to pull it off Man And and now That, that same person That was HR Man, they probably watching you as a, yeah, as a fan. Yeah, they probably ain't even there no more. They well, probably they, they probably a fan now, yeah. So you didn't get another job after that? Yeah, like, I got another job. Oh, okay. And then when, when the, the another job I had got, I had to tell people my name was CJ. I mean, I <laughs> yeah, didn't wanna, because, because I any, didn't anybody who hiring you see that, they're going to be watching you like, you better not be over here doing yeah. that uh, this job. Wow. I, I had a, now nah, it's CJ now. I ain't want to let nobody know my name. Man, so how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to uh, link up with you? Uh, I'm on Instagram at Calamar underscore white. That's C A L I M A R underscore white. Uh, YouTube, the same thing, Calamar white. Facebook, Calamar white. TikTok, Calamar white. Wow. Yeah. So, and, when's your next show? Yeah. My next show will be in Atlanta. Dope. When? You be at the comedy show? I'll I got a, at the I Atlanta got a, comedy show. Do you ever do that? I be at one. I be at uh, Monticello's, Catch Cafe, The Projects, place called The Projects. That way T.I. went up at up after me. He also went up after me on at Sweet Lounge on Friday. Like every night in Atlanta, it's somewhere to do comedy. And that shit gonna be packed. Number, number, no, top three artists of all time, dead or alive, right quick before you get off of here. Rappers? Yeah. N- number no, one. No, any genre. Yeah, yeah, any genre. Any genre. Top three? Yeah, top three. Tip Wayne and Drake. I'm simple, man. Like Tip I ain't Wayne trying to go back all like you feel yeah, me? Like, yeah, Tip nigga, Wayne and Drake. Them who that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. Tip number one. Yeah, Wayne and Drake. But T.I. always number one. Yeah. That's dope, man. Dope, man. Yeah. I can't wait for you to this. Yeah, I, I like this interview, I, 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 I like the interview. interview. I didn't know how it was going to go. I, ain't, I can be real with you. Yeah. I was like, is this nigga like here? Why's well, like, got this nigga coming over here? Oh, I don't nah, know nah, this nah. nigga. <laughs> Call him. I don't know this guy. Uh, Call like him on the White, who is this nigga, man? But I'll look you what up. What you going to say? Call him on the Rawls? No, White. No, that's oh, just, you going to change the name? That was my first rap name. Call him on the Rawls. Oh, I got, nigga, I got, this nigga got a bag of CDs. Nigga, I, got, I like this nigga, man. I got that CD in too. Look, that nigga got a bag of CDs, man. Look, this nigga here was a real rapper, nigga. Thing. See, that was my first. Oh, nah, it ain't on that, but. Oh, man, look at this nigga, man. man. I, I changed that bit. That was I got his baby right pitch on. He, he done really followed behind. That was, my first, that was my first CD, the baby pitch, and then the second CD, the HYM. That yeah. nigga look just like so a, are you gonna a, be a keep Bobby doing Valentino. Songs with your comedy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I still man, remember, remember. Bring I, that into your skit, man. Do a Bobby Valentino. Hold on, you yeah. bring him back though. Wait, you wait, ain't wait. Been doing nothing lately. Remember, I told. <laughs> you, remember, I told you before I got on the internet. I got. I want to have forty eight songs. Yeah, right. They never do shit at work. That was only the four songs. So why you didn't never get to the forty eight? You didn't I drop. Still got them in my phone. You ain't dropped them yet. You gonna drop? So, you, so what drop. number? So what number are you on? Uh, probably three. Cause they never do shit at work. Remember I told you I made that at work just on some like How long ago was that when that happened? This happened this song went viral like three years ago. Sure did. So because it went viral, you just didn't bother to drop anything else, you just let it do I tried listen, that following week I dropped another video. Nobody care about that no more. No, no, my cousin called me, my cousin Jarrell. He believed in the never do shit at work more than me. He the one paid for the copyright and everything. He, when I dropped the video, he was like, cuz, what you doing? I'm like, nigga, I'm keeping it going. He was like, hell no, nah, delete that, nigga. We finna work this job shit, nigga. That's it. Nigga, that's a hit. You need to work that. And then when he said that, I just never dropped no more So music. you get paid for that to this day? All the stuff yeah, set up, we, right? Yeah, we, we working on it. We we finna um do some shit with World Star. Oh, you yeah? Yeah, they reaching out. They want to... um. They want to pick up the song, but I mean, I got the song in another situation right now that I'm finna get out of by the end of this month. Then World Star, they gonna get behind it 
and take it to the next level. Man. How long can a song go? You said three years ago. How long can a song go viral for? How long can a situation That's a go viral for? When it first went viral, without you know going dead. Yeah, when it first went viral, uh, I had created a challenge, like you know, like the challenge right now. So people was doing the challenge, then people stopped doing it. So then I had to go on YouTube, type in people horse playing at work, and then like screen recorded and put my song behind it, make it seem like they was doing the challenge. Then I just got tired of doing that shit. I was like, nigga, I ain't trying to do no fucking music. I'm a comedian. I'm fuck that shit. I ain't finna be pushing this shit. Then I just gave up on it. So about like, I want to say like. Eight, nine months ago, my homegirl, she hit me up. She was like, you getting paid for your song? I was like, what song? She was like, they never do shit at work. I was like, yeah, somewhat. I was like, why? Because she was like, it's going crazy on TikTok. Nigga, it's so TikTok. many people doing I knew about to ask you that. Then I went on there. I was like, damn. I was like, damn. You ain't monetized on TikTok. Yeah, I am. Like, the label, like, we finna work some shit out what I got going on now. They owe me some money. But when I seen that, I was like, damn, I remember... I was like, when I seen the people, like real people actually doing it, I was like, damn, it was like a couple of months ago, I was faking it. I was screen recording it, like it trying to make it seem like people. Then I was like, damn, these real people, like this shit just fell in my lap. So Dope. then I just started saving it and posting them on my Instagram. Then it picked up on Instagram, like the real. It's like, I want to say like, it's like 100,000 people on TikTok that did it. And it's like 50,000 people right now. Instagram, on Instagram that's doing it, and you get and it, you monetized it, on Instagram too. Yeah, and too. it's just picking up. This like this ain't from three years ago. Like that's why I say like, but like I understand like hit song people be playing years and into mm -hmm. like pushing yeah. that shit. You yeah, hear me? yeah. Th man, thank you for coming on the mm -hmm. show, man. I, I hope you enjoyed it, man. You man. did yeah, a good yeah, job. Yeah. Uh, you a real interview nigga. Like you interviewed yeah, for like real around this whole man. You like yeah. you really gave us everything. I went to, to the penitentiary yeah. with yeah, you, yeah, yeah, the yeah. comedy show with you, nigga. Uh, only thing we didn't do is find out what your favorite food is. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. that? McDonald's. That nigga love McDonald's. <laughs> what that, that number three quarter pound? No, number six. Seven, that nigga, two, that three three burger killing that. that nigga, that wow. three killing that damn. I just seven. love their fries. That That's three it. killing that damn self, nigga. That See, quarter I, pound that and three. That, nigga, that, that, that my, that Which my, one you got? That my middle Which school one you meal, say? Man. I like quarter pound. Ah, that number three, nigga. You no, like he it. looking for more food. That yeah. my middle school meal, man. Nah, it's two cheese It don't fill it. Yeah, don't fill him up. Check it, man. Say, man, thank you so much. We yes, love sir, you, man. my Appreciate brother. Having you. Man, you Appreciate did a great job, man. Hey, Appreciate man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the yes, boss is sir. talking.